Well, welcome everyone. Today is Friday, June 12th, 2020, and this is our, I believe, our 12th edition of a Unity Forum. Um, this is something we began 12 weeks ago um, at the very outset of this uh, pandemic. Uh, if you think back to those times, it was uh, a, a, an extremely um, anxious time for, for so many of us, not knowing what was going to happen. Um, I don't mind saying that I was a little anxious myself. And it felt to me then that as we were using the virtual sort of um, tools that, 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 that we had at our disposal, that uh, we should dedicate uh, one session a week to our community, our, our, our staff, our families, our, our, the people we serve, uh, and use it as a way for us to remain connected during this time of social distancing and, and, uh, and all that that entails. And so we've had many, many uh, guests over that period of time. I have said it numerous times here and other places that this is probably now about my most favorite time of the week um, because I love to talk to our staff and I love to, to have the exchange and learning about some of the things that, you know what, I don't always hear about and I don't always know are happening. So uh, for those of you who have chosen to join us on this warm and beautiful Friday afternoon, thank you. Um, thank you for your interest and support of New Path. Um, it means more than I can possibly say to know that you're that you're out there, that you care as much as you do. But we are going to jump right into it. And today I um, have we have kind of a hodgepodge of guests. Sometimes we have a, a really cohesive theme. Uh, today that's that's not so much the case, but I think I'll be able to pull it together one way or another. Uh, but our first guest that I'm going to ask Greg to, to bring on board is uh, Karen Franklin. Hi, Karen. Hi, how are you? This is your second time being yes. featured in, in, in our uh, Unity Forum. And um, you're an important person at New Path because you're the face of our human resources department. Um, you are somebody that when many staff think about uh, any problem they might be having, any complaints, uh, uh, you know, an issue that affects them directly. You're the person that that probably, you know, I would say probably one out of three chances. You're the one that uh, that needs to be contacted. Um, I've said this about you before, but we're so lucky to have to have uh, caught you when we did uh, four years ago, or nearly four years ago. July eleventh uh, will be your fourth year anniversary with Newpath. It will. It will. Flowing right by. It sure did. You came to us with like, all kinds of experience. You'd worked for a human services and 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 and, and I think for profit. So you had a, a wide wide a range of, of, of experiences, but um, uh, you had all that um, all the ingredients of what I would consider to be a very successful, you know, sort of uh, leader. In, in human resources, most of all, your 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 compassion, your your caring about people, and your effervescent kind of personality. We've been so grateful to to uh, to have enjoyed that, especially over the past few years. Um, I asked you to come on today because I um, I thought it would be good to kind of touch base and see uh, hear from you. Um, just you know, sort of big picture, um, how you think that we've been handling managing um, this whole uh COVID-19 pandemic with with all of the complexities that it's brought on board with the people that have been furloughed with the people that are working all different kinds of schedules outside the normal routines people calling you not sure about things um it, it it certainly has been a time unlike any other and um you had sent me some notes ahead of time and I was struck by how many times you said how proud you are of the team how proud you are to be a part of New Path I wonder if, I'm just going to give you you know some a few minutes to just kind of talk about some of the key key things that you think that we've accomplished, maybe areas that we're still working on, um, how you think we've we've managed during this this crazy crazy time. I think one of the most impressive things is the fact that we were trying to to get into technology. You're very passionate about that. We I was on some task force. We we knew that it was going to be challenging. Um, you know, with DDS and different things and navigating life and. 
Um, just to see what I have seen in the last 12 weeks has been amazing. So I have logged on to our virtual programming. I've seen our clients' faces. It's almost brought a tear to my eye because you don't realize how much you miss everybody until you until you see them and kind of the hubbub of the day-to-day -day, day program that you know we were typically in. Just seeing um, the directors, the managers, the staff, it just seems almost like it was seamless um, to coordinate how to take day program staff and staff them into the residential programs and support those staff on top of working from home and trying to navigate all that, creating these online learnings that are, you know, are robust and that everybody can enjoy. And it, it just seems to me when I'm on these things, like we've been doing it all along, it seems seamless. Everybody seems comfortable in it, creative. Um, I'm, I'm just constantly very proud, always gleaming with pride when I'm on these calls. I have the benefit of being on an HR forum with a lot of our sister agencies. So I get to know what other people are doing. And I, I, I guess I'm gonna toot our horn. I always feel that we're just a step above um, the way we treat our staff, the programming, the technology, um, the things we do from having our unity forums to having the touch bases two days a week just to give us an update. Um, to the different celebrations that we do on a yearly basis even before COVID. It just all Everything that I have seen in the last four years just makes perfect sense for what I have been able to see this last 12 weeks to see what we've accomplished. You are the primary um, sort of, in, in many cases, the, you, one of the, prim the primary contacts for many staff, you know, if there's any kind of an issue or a problem, or you or your team members. Um, right. How do you think our staff are doing from your perspective overall? I know that's a subjective kind of question and I didn't tell you in advance I was gonna ask it, but um, uh, do, do you, what would you say? Like, how do you think people are doing from your perspective, what you hear, what your daily, weekly, monthly sorts of issues are? So I think it's changed. I think in the beginning, I think people were scared. Uh, we had different situations where staff were battling um, nervous to come in because of family members or daycare issues. But as we've kind of approached, I think we're kind of now at a more um, kind of new normal. Um, to answer that question, I'd have to put it into a couple buckets where we have staff that haven't missed a beat. They've been working plenty of shifts. We've had some staff that haven't been able to get as many hours because perhaps they can't work second and third shift. So we've, have, we've had to navigate through the, those issues. Um, staff wanting to make sure of, um, you know, why does somebody have more hours than I do and navigating, you know, seniority and needs of the client and locations of our programs. So I, I feel that our staff uh, feel supported. Um, we provide these forums for them. Um, and any issues that have come up in regards to uh, concerns, we've addressed them along the way. I think the people that are working are, are working and the people that are home now that's where they need to be for whatever their personal reasons are. And we've been able to accommodate that. We have been very flexible um, supporting um, anyone's concerns. And one of the things that we've done is allow people to take a temporary leave of absences and pull themselves out of the equation. And then as you discussed, we did furlough some staff as well. The majority of the folks that we furloughed, um, to be completely candid, I think it was okay for their situation. I think that the transportation drivers, right, that was the majority of the people we had to furlough, um, they were okay with that because they understood. And then the other staff that we furloughed, um, they were picking up very few hours or not being able to pick up hours at all. So it really ended up working for what they needed at that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're part of a team. You, you lead our human resources department. Um, I'm gonna give you a minute or two to talk about your team members. Um, how are they doing? How are they performing? What are they doing? Because uh, I know it's not just it's not just you. Uh, you're you 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 lead lead the cause, but uh, how are they doing? So I think they're doing wonderful. Um, they're an amazing team. They were an amazing team before COVID, an amazing team now. So we have a staff of four, including myself. Uh, we have Lisa Larocque who handles our payroll. And she has done an amazing job. She pays us, right? We love you, Lisa. Right? We love Lisa. She pays us. She has had to navigate through um, a lot of challenges during COVID with trying to get in touch with our payroll company and how does she set up the COVID incentive pay and how does she ensure that everyone gets what they're supposed to get and, and the tracking. And 
So that has been, you know, uh, seamless as well. Me and her communicate um, on a daily basis through Teams. That was something that I had established back when we were still using Skype for business before it became Teams, that everybody had a camera and the ability so we can instant message each other and then we have that face-to-face -face contact. So we haven't missed a beat with that. We have Anna who has taken on um, a lot of responsibility uh, prior to COVID and significantly with COVID where she is our main point of contact for workers' comp, um, employee issues, leave of absence requests, um, and just ensuring that we're tracking um, all the COVID trackers, um, providing all the data that's being requested. So she hasn't missed a beat either. Because uh, have, not to interrupt you, but there's a significant amount of data that, that we're by law re required to report to the state. Isn't that that right? It, it, on it meant numerous factors, but uh, absolutely. And we're, we're usually supporting um, Sharon Pitts with the information she needs for the Board of Health. Plus, yeah. we're trying to track our own internal. We need to track our own internal. Who's coming? Who's going? So we started that very early on of why why folks are out, so that we could kind of gauge where our staff, you know were who who needed to be working who might be ill um, just so that we would have a look back in time because you know that this data is going to become very important to all companies to know what how it affected the workplace how many mm -hmm. workers are out of work and such mm -hmm. um, then we have lisa fernandez lisa fernandez is the the amazing backbone behind the three of us so oh, you know lisa was one of the first people i worked with in this organization she used yeah. to be the here at West Street, and I remember one of my first things. This is back in 2003 or 2004. Um, you know, working with her, as we opened Demi Way and some other programs. But she's been with us a long time. She has, and what I thank Lisa for is she loves to be a behind-the-scenes person. Anything I give her, she just takes it. Um, yeah. She's very thankful um, that she joined the um, the human resource team. I would say she's been with us probably three years now under the human resource team. Um, I think it changed the scope of her job. Um, she must thank me on a daily basis for um, the way I lead the group um, and the, the work that she gets and the support that she gets. She is the backbone behind recruiting and making sure that candidates are kept in touch with and documentations and certifications and um, you know, making sure that even though we're in COVID that driver's license are still being um, you know, verified behind the scenes and so to kind of loop it all back to your main question, um, this team has done an amazing job and I, I had no doubt the day that you announced that we weren't gonna be able to come back to New Boston Street the next day, I had no doubt that this team could just pick up the next day and just go and that's what we've done. I'm glad you had no doubts because I had doubts, not about your team, but I just had doubts in general. I just, I didn't know how self-motivated and 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 sort of focused people were going to be i i've just been really so um if i say astounded that makes it maybe sounds negative that i thought for some reason people wouldn't be those things but i just maybe maybe because i'm I, I worry about myself and my you know you know i get distracted easily and it's i i much prefer working in an office environment where i can have the face-to-face -face contact and the, you know the, the back and forth with staff but but I'm glad you um, you felt that level of confidence when we when we went into this whole thing because um, I certainly haven't worried about anything you've been doing and, and it seems that you've been managing not just all of the regular business which is already in and of itself a tremendous you know challenge but all of the additional layers that have come because of this right. pandemic and and all of the uh, you know the reporting requirements and many of the things that you've already talked about um, you. Um, uh you had shared some trivia with me and i'm going to see if i can put my fingers on it um <laughs> yes so our last day worked was march 23rd it's been 12 weeks i already said that you have informed me that you typically would have driven 86 miles a day which would account to for 430 miles per week to work yes. you have not been doing for 12 weeks right so during that time you've saved 5160 miles on your car which According to you, it was huge because it's already at 135,000 miles. Right. Good. See, I don't say I never do anything for you, you know. I, I, <laughs> I, um, and uh, that's about $60 a week you say gas over 12 weeks. That's $720 on gas you saved. And yep. I can't do this, but your last fill up was on April 30th, really? 
And that was only when you had to take a ride to the Westford office. Karen, with those kinds of savings, are you ever going to want to come back to the office? Are you going to ever want to come back to a to 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 the, it's sort of an old the old normal that we once enjoyed? So those numbers are pretty staggering. So they're pretty impressive to look at, and it makes the, to answer that question pretty tough. But I will say so two parts. When I see everyone on the calls, and like I said, there's been a few times I've gotten emotional as I've seen the clients and. Um, I feel connected and I see everybody every day. And I think I see people more than when I was in the building and going to different locations. Um, but when you start to think about it, I am a people person. I do like to see people. So it's it's almost like a half and half. Uh, you know, I'm like you. I want to be in the office. I want to see people in the hubbub. But because of the technology that New Path has laid out and the ability and how fast that we've come up to speed, I don't feel alone. I don't feel unconnected. And I think, as I said, um, I attend some meetings that perhaps I didn't attend regularly, and I should have, right? But then I wasn't at the right location when the meeting was being held, and we didn't have all this technology in place. So I couldn't just dial in. So I think it's it's a it's a 50-50, right? Well, Karen, you're, you're, you're perfect for your job. Um, I, I want to conclude our time together by acknowledging, I don't think we did this the last time that I had you on, but... In 2017, your first walk the walk, you were you you came in at number 68, but you were just you just you know basically started and you were just trying to figure things out. Um, in 2018, you were number 40 in the sub 50, raising $1,700. In 2019, you went to 26, number 26, raising $2,193 and 56 cents. And um, and uh, when this all sort of came to a calamitous uh, uh, shut down uh, this year you were at 36 so that's going to come for something and um, that just shows um, such a just such a positive model for for the staff that you represent and and uh, your, your 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 dedication to do path and um, and the other thing I'm just going to say as we we end this I personally appreciate even though I don't supervise you directly because you're supervised by Greg Morris and um, you know we have you know we, we interact but not daily. I've appreciated the times that you and I have been able to sit down face to face in my office and you let me share from my heart how I feel about things and what matters to me and what's important because you are the one that you know, made me realize you interpret and apply our policies but hey it's so important to me that you do so with with a with a with a nod to or or when thinking about what matters to me as the ceo and and i have just appreciated that so much about you and i believe that you're doing that and so the times that we've sat down and really kind of like almost like not beating a dead horse but you know really gone through something that it's just been so important to me that you understand this these are my values and this is how i want staff to be treated and and i feel that you've just done that in such um a a, a a supreme and, 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 and excellent fashion and, and um, I just want to publicly thank you for, for, thank you. for your thoughtfulness in, in, in doing that and for guiding us during this difficult time. Thank you very much and I think it's an honor to work under your philosophies because I, I enjoy being able to interpret the way you care and what you want perceived and when I go to make decisions I make them off of what would new path you know, what, what, what would New Path stand behind? What would be the right thing to do in this situation? And we always err on the much more, um, um, you know, generous side and the caring side and making sure that staff feel connected. And I think that the proof is in the pudding. Look mm -hmm. at what has happened over the last 12 weeks and what people have given back, so. Well, Karen Franklin, you are terrific. And we're so um, fortunate to have you. And uh, it's great to see your smiling face. Thank you for stepping in today and for giving us this important update. And uh, the next time you come on, we'll talk about um, how you're all faring at home with your daughter in the basement and, 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 and the workspace and all of that. But you got uh, it. We'll wrap it up. Thanks so much. Have a great way, rest of the weekend, OK? All right, bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, I talk too long. I know I do. I, I, I'm going over. Um, but that was good to hear from, from Karen. Well, next up, we have somebody that many of you probably know. It's uh, a, a, a man named Ken Zinavaldi. Ken sort of came on to the spotlight of New Path in 2017 when he 
was uh, one of our presenters at our annual celebration. That was the year we were at the Tootsbury Country Club. Um, Ken began working with New Path in November of 2015. Um, so he's, uh, there he is. Now, for the rest of our viewers out there, I've already had the chance to meet this uh, wonderful person. You see, I'm trying not to use words like beautiful and 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 because that's you know that's something that you often assign to females and i'm sure you're intelligent and smart and a great leader we we do this in our society but you are beautiful and you are ken's daughter is that right amy i'm uh you my dad yeah <laughs> the daughter yeah dad yeah yeah so thank you for joining us today ken i'm gonna just um you know, people, so many people know you because you've been so involved in and in such a source of, um, um, what should I say, uh, just, just this community advocacy. You have gotten uh, all kinds of, of inroads and made connections for our people at, uh, at Hanscom and, and with with all kinds of, you know, chief and, and fire and, 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 and at the, at the Woburn and Y and, 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 and courthouses and, 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 and this part of how we featured you at our, our annual celebration. But as of March 23rd, everything kind of just came to a screeching halt and you found it necessary to reinvent yourself. And so you did, and you used this um, clever daughter of yours that's sitting beside you. Um, I, I wish you'd just tell us a little bit about what your life looks like now and, and some of the things that, that you've been doing that are different from what you've been doing before. My world went upside down, Dan, as all of yeah. us. Do. Um, and, and a couple of months ago, I didn't even know what a Zoom was, to be honest with you. Um, and, and, and my head was spinning and we had no idea how long this would last. And we um, we came up with the virtual programs and I, I felt so disconnected with everybody and, and we lost touch and, and we started the programming and what a blessing. And I reached out to the community that had been so good in accepting us, uh, such as the YMCA, such as the airport, the Dunkin' Donuts, uh, friends of mine from high, that are high school teachers and we got them all involved to show our individuals that the community hasn't forgot us. I mean, as a matter of fact, more important, they miss us. Um, and and we, we've developed the No Wall Show, which I host, and I co-host the Noontime Extravaganza with Mike Edwards. And, and we've gone fishing trips and again to the airport. Uh, I feel like we've strengthened our, 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 our connections out there. I mean, you find out who your real friends are when the times get tough. And the airport and all these places did not abandon us. Matter of fact, they reached out to us, uh, which was which was an amazing, amazing feeling. They reached out to us, did they? Yes, yes, how yes. Check, just to check in and see how we were doing, or what? Yeah, absolutely, and they were afraid. They know that our our individuals are, are very routine based, and they knew that the routines were all upset. And uh, like the chief offered to come online uh to talk to everybody and all, all the ymca gave us a virtual tour showing them that it, everything had shut down it wasn't just us the whole world was shut down uh yeah. mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna reconnect with the dunkin donuts next week i mean it's it's been amazing it's not a one-way street we're not we're not just leaning on them they lean on us and as much as we missed them and a couple of years ago i think i would have been shocked to say this but as much as we miss them we've made a connection that they now miss us and yeah. and that's what this whole program is all about and, yeah. and it's amazing it's wonderful it's wonderful you know not to just not to, to get us off track but that what you just said i think is so important i think sometimes we 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 we're not careful we have such low expectations for things that we would we it's not our natural sort of inclination to think that we would be missed by others you know what you just said i think is, is is such an interesting thing to to think about that i'm sure people do miss you and miss our guys that come in and 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 having incidents like this happen 
um, you know, often, you know, clearly this was something that not, not anybody, you know, sort of invited or wanted or ever predicted, but it, it's, it's, it's how do you use these situations to kind of understand, you know, the dynamics better. And, and, and uh, so it's nice to know. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't they miss us? They did. They, I fielded many a phone call. How are they doing? Do they need anything? Uh, mm. You know, uh, you know, we did a virtual tour out from the airport uh, the other day just to show them. Uh, and, and the airport uh, is just reopening, so that may come to which, uh, you know, a visit there may come. Uh, it's amazing. Like I said, you find out who your friends are when times get tough. And, and they stood up tall. They really, really... They really came through for us, and, and the YMCA has been in touch, trying to keep us informed as to what's going on. Um, amazing! It, it it it's blown my mind. It really has. Can can you are somebody that in just such a short amount of time being with the organization and not knowing much, you know, more about your past, your history, or your work history, or anything? Certain people just have this way of 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 becoming a part of things you know you can tell you are somebody that is you know responsible you you meet and you keep and meet your obligations that, that 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 you're probably a very dependable leader within your community within your family and it's 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 even after this well especially after the, the we shut down and everybody's scrambling to do the, the, the virtual programming your name just continued to pop up, you know, and which is no surprise because of, of all we learned about you, you know, coming up. But it just means so much to me that you've continued and, and you've remained somebody that's been, uh, you know, an example to others, not just in your outputs and what you've accomplished, but in maintaining the, your, your positive outlook and the spirit that you bring to your job every day. I don't think I've ever seen you, and I'm sure, I'm sure you get down from time to time and you feel discouraged from time to time, but you've got such a buoyant way of, of, of living your life, you know, in, in publicly. And, and, and I just want to say, I appreciate that. And I'm sure many people do as well. Thank you. You know, Dan, over the years, I've, I've held many jobs. Don't laugh at me, but New Path was, is not a job. It's more of a cause. I can't explain it. In other places, um, eight to four, punch out, go home. Enjoy your weekend. Don't bother me. New Path has is, is never been that way to me. And I don't think it's that way to many of our staff. I mean, the phones are ringing at six at night, sometimes on the weekend. And I gladly, uh, uh, it's, it's not a job. It, I, mm -hmm. I, see the, I see how many parents, you talk about your mother. There are people out there that haven't seen their, their children. And all this, they are counting on us. I mean, yeah. They need us. We have stepped in to fill a very large void. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, and I, I feel honored that we are entrusted to take care of them and that, that they feel safe knowing that we're out there. And, and I've never, like Karen talked, New Path is a step above. I mean, our last show that we ran on our No Walls program, we started talking about volunteering. Hey, you know, we've got it good, a lot of us. It's mm -hmm. now time. As we're getting closer to opening up, it's now let's turn our attention to how can we help the community? How can we volunteer at the, at the soup kitchens? How can we help clean up beaches? I mean, how can New Path get out there and be a force out there? Somebody that they turn their attention and look at us. Well, you are certainly not um, without ideas and vision, and that is something that we need on every level. I want to use the last couple of minutes that we have to... Um, talk about you said just said we've got a good and I would say so because you have this uh, this daughter of yours Amy that's sitting beside you and I'm imagining for some reason uh, rather than have you say anything more about her may I speak directly to her Amy you I didn't wait for you to say yes but um, you told me you're 16 you're you just finished your junior year or you're going to be going into your junior year I'll be going into junior yeah I just finished sophomore going into junior year so um, and you become a part of things. You want to talk to us for a couple of minutes about what you've been doing and how you kind of got, you you got, uh, you know, sort of signed up for all of this and, and, and what you think of it. Well, it started when you were doing the programs and we needed people to join. Uh, my father had suggested to me that I read uh, the series Diary of a Wimpy Kid 
because it's a series that appeals to all ages and all people. It it's a fun book. It's a comedy. It makes people smile. Yeah. So that's what you've been doing. You've been reading then, to, you know, and you're you're up to the fourth one in the series. Yeah, we're on the fourth book on in the series. That's, and so and you're doing this just out of, you know, sort of just on your own free time, you know, when you're not, you know, and you're, you're, you're like distance learning and everything else. And what, had you ever worked or been around or exposed to people with um, any kind of disability or intellectual disability, or is this a sort of a, uh, I mean, obviously you knew your, your, your father worked in the field, but was this your first, first personal time? Uh, well, I've actually attended some of the events at New Path before. Uh, what was it? Walk the Walk? Yeah, Walk the Walk. I attended that before, and I also signed up for a gym class called Adaptive PE, where I help people with disabilities in their PE class. Wow. Well, you know what? We often say that that uh, when kids are young, you hear them talking about wanting to be an actor or being a fireman or a lawyer or a or a doctor, and, and right now, oh, the whole your whole future is ahead of you. You can be whatever you want to be, but we need great people working in the disability uh, industry as well, and 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 smart attorneys to to represent us in public policy, and and, and uh, so hopefully you'll uh, you'll maybe some of your father's passion and commitment will rub off on you, and and uh, we'll find you. Um, Unless you just want to get rich and then just go be some sort of corporate attorney, you know. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with being rich either, but um, but we need people that are rich in spirit to help move this our 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 our, our industry forward. Well, Amy, thank you so much for your volunteering for bringing life and and I understand that everybody that's part of the groups are love to love to see you and that you're just a bright spot and uh, you just add so much and can of course you continue to do us proud in every way as you are out there and about and um, continuing to share your passion and zeal and, 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 and advocacy. Um, your daughter's got a lot to learn from you and, uh, and uh, she's, I'm sure she's very proud of you. Thank you both so much for being a part of this today. And Thank you. Um, Please stay safe and healthy and well, and, and we'll see you at the next event, Amy, and we'll have more of a chance to talk, okay? Absolutely right. We got this. We got this, guys. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right. As I said, I've got to constantly, when, when I'm on these things, I have to constantly be looking at the time because otherwise, I, you know, you know me, I can go on and on and on. Um, so the last person that I've asked to join us today is Mr. James Tannen. Uh, James is very well known by most people in the organization. And um, he joined us uh, early on, I think, for one of our first uh, uh, Unity forums that we had. I interviewed him. And um, there he is. Mr. Tannen, hey, yeah. how, are, how you? are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Um, you've been with us for uh, about as long as anybody has at New Path. Maybe there's a couple, maybe Judy Miskell and I don't know if Sharon Pitts and Dan Landon are right around your your uh, your your um, uh, longevity, but 21 years and 17 days by my count. <laughs> uh, May 24th of 99, you started working with us. Who's counting? Yes. County, you're, you're you're a different person then. Uh, I mean, we we I mean, I was I was doing the math when I started New Path. I was two it was 2004, so I was like 36. How old are you? I I believe I was um, maybe 24, 25 when I started working at New Path. Um, you know, full of full of dreads, had a head full of dreads. You did have a head full of dreads. And I remember one of my first meetings with, with the former CEO and the leadership team at the time, we were talking about wanting to promote you and people were like, well, what are we gonna do about his dreads? What are we gonna do about his dreads? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny the kinds of things that, that, that stick with me, you know, but James, what do, you think, what do you think I admire most about you? Um. I think you admire the way that I 
embrace um, embrace systems and and just learning. You know, I will learn something and I embrace it, and then I make it my own. I might add a twist to it, but I make it my own and and I I go with it. It's exactly right. Now that you should you and I didn't tell you I was going to ask that question. It's kind of a twist of a question, but you just hit it without even backing even hesitating. Um, I find that so especially noteworthy, and I've said this so many times, people are probably sick of it, and maybe you are even are, but I don't think in my entire career I've ever met anybody that has demonstrated the kind of uh, just almost ravenous appetite for growing and learning, and I see the things that you take from our business meetings and that you implement with your team and not exactly the same but it reminds me so much of my own appetite as i you know was coming up and and and, and growing and, and learning that i was constantly looking for new ideas and then trying to make them work for me and so many of the things that i brought to new path in 2004 when i came um you know was from other people smarter than me that had mentored me you know going on and i just love the way that you do that um in your teams and i think it's often done and without a lot of fanfare people don't know about it but you just do it because it's it's something that you want to um make part of your you know your arsenal um so that was a good answer you knew exactly what i was because i said that i've told you that many times haven't i yeah you are somebody that is is touches so many different layers of this organization. You have run and established and and, and, and brought a, a, an incredible structure to the clinical uh, uh, abilities of this organization. Uh, you have been fundamentally um, um, uh, connected to how our, our autism programs have evolved, how our philosophies in autism and autism programming have, have been uh, been represented and, and carried in the community. You have, um, you've been part of the Pathfinders, which is the group that has helped to plan and steer our monthly business meetings for our, since it first started. And do you know that was in September of 2010? 2010. Time flies when you don't remember. You don't remember what you said to me when I said I wanted you to be part of the committee, do you? I do. I said you need a you need a black person on on the team. <laughs> Is that what I said? Yes. <laughs> you did say that, and and I and, and I and I at the same time I loved it, and I shuddered, and I was like, oh my god! But I mean that was I mean I wanted diversity on the committee, but I also wanted you because I I knew you were you were somebody that was um, probably gonna learn more than the average person on that committee, you know, because you were going to be, you know, having a chance to kind of be in this laboratory of ideas. And, and, but I remember you were just so cocky about it. I was like, yeah, I just like, it's so funny that you do that. Um, <laughs> you are, you are a member of the delegation that traveled down to Washington DC twice. Yes. Uh, the first time to review and evaluate uh, St. John's human services. And the second time to do a national uh, to, to participate in a national conference in conjunction with St. John's, um, uh, and you have um, been a major, partly in response to that contributor to our No Walls development of our No Walls, Walls program, our overall employment initiative, uh, uh, and 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 contributed so many ways to our family satisfaction. Never mind your um, outstanding ability. I'm just getting all of the platitudes out, you know, all of the, the compliments out of the way early on, and then I could just, you know, we can get to it. Uh, from a fundraising perspective, you know, I feel like you probably had more of an impact than you even understand because when we, um, in 2013 or so, decided to take the walk and to make it, to really push it to see what it could become, you rallied your team, New Boston Strong, in a way that I feel kind of set a, a tone for the entire organization as far as the earnest, competitive, you know, sort of driven um, 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 uh, a motivation that your team members, that's made your, your, your team, you know, a real ju juggernaut when you think about, you know, that how many times you've carried the trophy. And you personally have raised uh, 
over twelve thousand seven hundred eighty-eight dollars. You've been uh, you've been number eleven in two thousand nineteen, number seventeen on Club Fifty in two thousand eighteen. In two thousand seventeen, you were number nine. Two thousand sixteen, number seven. In two thousand fifteen. Number 10, you are one of the few legacy members that we have that have been part of Club 50 for every year that it's been available. So you are, you you seem to care about your job. I do. I, I love my job. I love what I do. And that's why I've been here for 21 years and 17 days, as you mentioned. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's something that's part of my life. It's, it's, it's engraved in me. It's, you know, a new path. It, you know, it's just part of my life now. Obviously, it's I've been working at New Path for um, almost half my life, and, and that's that's something wow. to say in itself. Almost my whole entire existence, half of it I've been at New Path. Um, so to say that I don't love my job is an understatement. Um, you know, I, I love what I do. I love the organization. I love the the path it's on, um, and you know, I do my best to to help advance it. You do, you do, you do it in some incredible ways, James. I know that it's kind of um, uh, you, you. We we talked about this just briefly ahead of time, but um, you know, interestingly, it's it was the day after your anniversary, but on May twenty fifth of this year, we had the terrible um, circumstances around George Floyd's death. Um, I don't want you to be the black person that I go to to talk about black issues. But over the years that I've known you, I feel that you and I have, have had some opportunities to have some some deep and thoughtful conversations about race and 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 and, and race and how it it it, it affects um, how it affects you, how it affects us as an organization. And and I value you, your opinion and respect it enormously. Um, you shared with me, and I don't know if you if you want to just a couple of minutes people may be surprised that you yourself have been a victim of, of uh, in Woburn of, of, of really some pretty terrible uh, racial profiling so, started all right so um yes I mean I I grew up in a predominantly white um, community um, and matter of fact we we're the only black family in the community I grew up with in um, my pretty much a, a large portion of my childhood and so I, I was exposed to you know, racism um, directed at me, my family. Um, and I think it made me a stronger person. Um, I don't have hate in me for anybody. Um, I understand there was a different time, a different mindset. Um, the society evolves. And overall, I think that society has made great strides, uh, but they still, we still have to improve. Um, when I started working in Woburn, Woburn was, is still a predominantly white community. Um, I had a sports car when I first started working there. Young, a young black, mm -hmm. a young black man driving to work every single day. There was a certain Woburn police officer that patrolled that area in Woburn, and he used to pull me over um, frequently, weekly, um, to the point that you know he gave me tickets. I didn't think nothing of it, and I just paid off the tickets. And that means that um, you assume responsibility, so they find you a fault once you pay for it. And then my license got revoked because I, they said I was a habitual offender. I had to go to court. Um, there was, you know, for um, racial profiling, the, it, it was an ugly mess because the um, it lasted for a year, you know, before the trial was over. And I was found not responsible for all the charges. They reinstated my license. The officer was cited um, back then. Um, so it was unfortunate. Um, but it was a learning opportunity for the officer and myself. Um, and, you know, so I, I just think it made me a better person. And hopefully it made that officer a better person too, because you have to attack it individually. Um, because, you know, what I see going on in the news with the, um, you know, the, people should be upset because what happened to Mr. Floyd is something that happens every year, multiple times. And we thought, right, we thought this was being addressed. And for it to still happen, um, it, it's it's disheartening um, to know that that's happening. And what hurts even more, it's not only being done by white officers, you have officers of color who are racial pro profiling as well. It's not, it's just an issue with the policing. Um, and they just need to be more aware to cultural diversity, just like New Path provides trainings, you know, I, 
I am very impressed and happy with how New Path as an organization has progressed when it comes to equality for their employees over the over the uh, my longevity there. You know, when I first started, just the business meetings alone. When I go to the business meetings now, I'm just so surprised and impressed by the diverse the diversity, the makeup of the management team, the administrative team, it is much more different than when I first started working there. Um, you know, we have culture, cultural diversity awareness trainings and events that we do every year. We've been doing this for over 10 years. Um, on an organizational level um, and administrative level, I see so much diversity. Um, New Path is just more ethically diverse than ever. Um, New Path's core values embrace e equality and unity. Um, you know, I was looking at the word cubics, and I was trying to figure out how do I how do I fit an R into cubics, because you with you know it lacks the word respect, and that is what New Path shows our employees, in my opinion, on an organization level is respect. Um, and as long as we keep striving to to be aware of social di of diversity and respect each other, I think we're going to be okay as, as an organization. I think we're on the right path. Um, so. James, I didn't, um, I think, I mean, I, I mean so much to hear you say these things because when you and I spoke beforehand, I certainly, um, uh, you know, didn't, didn't intend to, you know, ask you to, 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 to say positive things, but I, 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 I shared with you that right now across this country, every corporation, every business, every entity, I don't can't tell you how many emails I've gotten from everything from insurance companies to, you know, to, to, to Amazon, you know, with their anti-racism statement. And, and many CEOs are, are taking this as an opportunity to kind of, um, or, or to feel the need to, 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 in response to this, this most recent, you know, uh, an, an unforgivable attack again, against a black person that, that um, shouldn't have happened, and um, and I said to you, I said I, I don't I hate this feeling that I I'm compelled to do something uh, because if I don't, then I feel like I'm not, you know that that, that maybe I'm going to be accused of not caring or not taking this seriously, and yet I, I want to believe that every single day, 365 days a year, that we're trying to operate under a a, a, a paradigm or or, or a belief system where everybody is valued and respected and 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 I have many reasons for for understanding that the, the, the pain and the, the feeling of being devalued I shared with you before you know as a as a as as a gay man coming you know of age in in, in the mid 80s late 80s and new path was the first job I ever had where I felt I could be sort of out in the sense that I could share the fact that I had a, a life partner and that I could bring him to events and 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 I've been I I had, had I've had all kinds of things. Not that I'm comparing it to race, but I understand the feeling of being marginalized, you know. And and if I ever found out that was happening anywhere within our organization, I would be I would be so upset, you know. I I would not want that to be happening because that I just don't believe there's any place for that. So to hear that. That you feel that we're doing a you know a pretty good job. I mean, there's always room for improvement. We need more diversity in our senior team. We need more diversity on our board. It's something we're working on. But um, you know, if you, you distill it down to that idea that 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 we are respecting our staff, which I think is what you said, that that fundamentally yes. it's all about. And what I what I truly respect is that I don't like how some sometimes they think the answer is to give you a, a hand-me-down to to give you a freebie because of your the color of your skin i still believe that you know that you have to earn and you have to you, you know you have to work hard to get what you want and it, not just because i'm a person of color that all of a sudden i'm going to be given a pass for something i you know i want the same opportunity i want the same challenge and i don't want to you know, I want to be challenged, not because, um, and I don't want it to be related to my skin color. And yeah. when I go to new, when I go to new path, I feel like, I, I feel like I don't have a color. I don't feel like my color matters. You know, from the day that I was hired there by Matt Johnson, till this very moment, um, I don't feel like my skin color was ever a factor. 
um, with my performance or how I was judged at New Path. Um, I feel like I, I've been respected well, and I tried to pass that on to the management team that I oversee, to the employees that work in New Boston Street, that same mentality that, you know, it's, we're all the same color when we work at New Path. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> we are. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the way I move, I go about my business every day. I don't, you know, I just close my mind to people of different colors. Like we're all the same color. We're just different shades of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just another experience that sets us, you know, the diversity that we have, I think just makes it so much more interesting. You know, I mean, how boring a place would this be if we were all, you know, bald, fat white guys like me, you know, that, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's the diversity that enriches our, our discovery together. And, and you know what I mean? Like, I just, I think that it's, I love, and, and I wish I had more co opportunities. Every once in a while, you'll come into my office, you'll sit down, we'll chat for quite a long time. And, 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 and I always just appreciate and value it so much because I feel like I get different kind of insight from you. And you, you're, you know, your worldview is a little different. And, and, I, and I always feel uh, the better for having had that um, exposure. Um, you know, this whole thing, um, you know, this, this, you know, I'm talking about the George Floyd and, and the marches and, you know, this talk about dismantling police departments and, and, and reform. I do believe that reform is needed within the police, in many police departments. Um, I, I, I think that, um, I mean, I'm not saying I, I've got any answers, but um, I think the biggest thing that, that, that maybe we take from this is just the willingness and agreement again, that we're going to keep a conversation going. The fact that I can say to you, do you remember what I said, what you said to me when I asked you to join the Pathfinders? <laughs> and you said, yeah, well, you must need a black person. Just, I don't know if that's right or wrong to say, but, 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 but the fact that we can converse that way and that we can have that kind of honesty, to me, it's just, it's worth so much more than like any other kind of, you know, you know, false, uh, you know, you know, task force or, you know, whatever else. That, 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 that we keep that dialogue going and 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 I do I'll say I do rely on you to help kind of steer the way because I hold great respect for you you're an intelligent thoughtful uh, you know uh, um, introspective person that I feel and that knows our our organization well and so naturally I, I'm gonna um, you know tap you when 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 I need you know that sort of um, you know, you know, the particular insight that you bring, I think, to the table. So, I mean, as we go, we go through this. I, I want New Path to be just the very best support that it possibly can be for people of every color, race, gender, creed. That, that if you work for New Path, then, then we're gonna fight for you, and we're gonna do the best we can, however that looks and whatever that means. Um, and, and. Um, and so, you know, we're, we'll keep the conversation going, but um, I just really would, I had this itching to like get with you and to talk to you a little bit about it. I thought, let's just, let's take a risk and bring it out for everybody to see who wants to see it. So um, James, is there anything you want to add as we wrap up for this? this uh... No, I, I appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to express myself um, on this subject matter too, because um, that's not something that, that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, opportunity, a daily opportunity to do that. And it's a very touchy matter. Um, but I do want people to know, you know, all the employees and family members, stakeholders who are listening, that, you know, I, I feel that New Path has always been advocating for equality, that it's not that just because of what's going on now that we're hopping on the bandwagon. You know, um, if you had asked me this question a year ago with the absence of the protest, I would have had the same response. Um, and it's really just that we have to just continue to have that in our mind and our mindset and continue to push forward with it. And we will, we will prevail. Um, and we have been, um, you know, things have, it's just, just my whole life. When I look at my childhood till this point in time, and I see how the world has evolved, the world is moving in the right direction. We need the protests. We need, you know, to continue, but things are moving in the right direction. I just hope that, that that continues. Your mother must be so damn proud of you. She is. <laughs> <laughs> I figured she was. I hope she watches this. And if she is, um, well, she already knows it, but she raised one hell of a guy. Um, and I don't know where we'd be without you being part of this team, um, James. And I, I hope we have another uh, 21 years together. 
Uh, however, however this world evolves, but uh, knowing that you're here makes a huge difference for all of us. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all that you do, for being the inspiration you are to me personally, uh, for the, the training support, the, 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 the uh, you know, the, the, the way you, 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 you assemble a, your teams around you, the retention that we enjoy because of you and your influence and, and the model that you provide. Uh, it just cannot be overstated how important you are in so many ways. And, and uh, thank you for talking with me about about this issue. And um, I look forward to seeing you soon in person, I hope, someday. Well, thank you for the kind words. And I, I truly appreciate the time out here and have the opportunity to speak with everybody. All right. Well, take care, Jay. We'll talk soon, OK? You too. Bye. Okay, bye. All right, guys, this went on a little longer today, uh, but I wanted to to get that in with with James and and honestly, I had no idea what um, how that was going to go, but I did not want to end another week without at least addressing you know the issue of um, uh, of 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 what what happened with George Floyd and just the the terrible uh, violence that has um, um, impacted so many uh, black lives and. Um, and uh, I want everybody out there to know that uh, we're going to continue to abide by our, our our fundamental truths and our commitments that we we support and advocate for people that are vulnerable, that are marginalized, that, that need help. And sometimes that's us. Sometimes that's me. And um, if there's anybody out there that feels that they've been a victim of any kind of discrimination or racism, then um, certainly you know who to contact. Uh, Supervisor or, or Karen Franklin or you can talk to me. All right. With that, I am going to conclude. Have a great, safe weekend. Please remember to wear your mask if you're outdoors. To social distance, to wash your hands, um, and um, I feel much better today than I did yesterday. So thank you for sharing this opportunity with me. And um, we'll talk next week, guys. We got this. We're going to do this. Um, all right. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye, guys.